Today I'm going to show you how to instantly improve sound quality by calibrating your speakers and your room for completely free of course, we're going to use Room Equalization Wizard and APO which is both free software. Download links for the software will be in the description of course and this is how it looks like when you first open Room Equalization Wizard. The first thing we want to do is go to preferences and set our inputs and outputs. So you can choose your audio driver here and then go to the panel and select your inputs and outputs, mine are already set correctly. And once you've done that, you can close it and go to measure. Now, as you can see at the moment, we're only measuring noise. That's because I didn't connect my microphone yet. You can use any microphone really. You can use a USB microphone like this. I also have a measuring microphone. If you don't have a microphone yet, it's of course not technically completely free, but I think most people already have one. And I'm just gonna plug this in. And for microphones like this, don't forget to turn on phantom power. And once I click that, you can immediately see that we already measure a signal. So the next thing we want to do is check levels with this button that basically checks how loud the input signal is. And before you click that button, make sure you turn the input gain quite a bit down because this might get a bit too loud. Um, and now we're just going to click that and hold your microphone where your head would be roughly. And it says that the level is a bit too low. That's why I'm going to turn up the input gain a bit and let's just try again. And now it says level OK and we can start from here. So there are a bunch of settings, you can rename it, you can set the level, you can set the frequency range, but most of this stuff is already pretty good in the default. You can also use noise instead of a sweep or whatever, but usually the default is already pretty good. The only thing that you might still have to do is choose a calibration file for your microphone. Even if you use a calibration microphone like this, no microphone is completely flat and it's always a good idea to just Google the calibration file, like just Google your na the name of the microphone and calibration file. And oftentimes you find something and if you find something, just click on calibration files, you can browse and select your calibration files. This is the ECM 8000 or something and I found one online, so I'm just gonna use that. Once you're done with that, you can pretty much start with the measuring. Basically just hold the microphone where your head would be. Again, it would be even better if you had like a stand or something, but realistically it won't matter that much. And click on start and I'll be quiet for this part, I guess. And that's it. And we immediately see this graph. This is basically the frequency response we got. As you, you can see, you can press the middle mouse button, by the way, to navigate around, to zoom in and zoom out and so on. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on. The first thing I would do is go here on graph and apply a little bit of smoothing so we can understand the graph a bit better. Let's go on this. And as you can see, the goal is, of course, that the graph is flat in theory, of course, and it isn't flat. So it's a good idea to apply some corrective EQing. If you want, you can also check out the waterfall diagram. This is interesting because it basically tells you how long each frequency takes to decay. The longer it takes to decay, the worse, basically. So if you look at this graph, we can see that my room isn't even that bad when it comes to decay time. But if you see that you have like uh, some frequencies that take very long to decay or something, then it might be a good idea to invest in some room treatment or bass traps or something to fix that. So let's start with the actual calibration part. What we're gonna do is click here on EQ. This is gonna open a new window and we can see our frequency response here and there are some settings on the right side. Again, most of these settings are pretty cool already in the default settings, but there are a few things you might want to change. Here in the target settings, there's something called the target level. You can just basically click here and see um, the level on the left side. And it's always a good idea to choose something that's basically the la lower bound of the signal you measured. So I think around 82 is pretty good here. So I'm just gonna type in 82. Oh, my microphone's in the way. So this is basically the level it will, it will correct it to. After that in filter tasks, the default settings are pretty okay. The only thing you might want to keep in mind is that this individual max boosts basically means that the EQ can also boost the signal and not only cut it. And usually that's not a problem, but in some very specific uh, circumstances, it, it might cause your signal to distort. So just keep that in mind. If you want to be safe, just set it to zero. I'm actually gonna set it to zero. 
here. Okay, <laughs> I forgot one thing. The target type, of course, not subwoofer, but full range speaker. After that, just click match response to target. Yes, okay. And as you can see, it basically made something that is the opposite of our response to basically cancel it out and give a flat response. We can also see that you can uh, invert the filter response if you want, and as you can see, it pretty much matches what we measured if we invert it. Now, the only thing we have to do is export filter settings as text. Um, we don't want any notes, just click OK. I'm going to call this Adam A7X December or something. Hit Enter. And we're pretty much done with room equalization with that. Now let's go to APO. So this is how APO looks like. As you can see, I already have one thing that's for my headphones. It's not really related to this one. Just click on the little plus sign and on include and click on this one and choose the text file we just made. Here it is. Now there's one thing still left to do, which is go on this green uh, arrow, which will open the file basically. And at the beginning, click on a plus and click on device. And just change your device to the one where your speakers are connected. What this does is basically it will only apply the frequency response if you're using that device and not if you're using, for example, your headphones, which of course your headphones should have a different frequency response. Just click OK, then Control S to save it. And that's it. And while we're already at it, I'm also going to show you how to correct your headphones. There's a really cool website called autoeq.app. Just select your headphones, for example. I have the Sony, uh, Sony uh, VHXM5, who thinks of these names, man. <laughs> and then they have the profile of those headphones, the frequency response already measured. And you can basically just export it, for example, to Equalizer, APO, Graphical Parametric EQ, it doesn't really matter. Select it and you can just download that as a text file. It's the same text file we just exported with Room Equalization Wizard and do the same thing for your headphones and then you have your headphones corrected as well. That's it for today. I hope your speakers sound better now. Until next time.